You need to add a form to the page. How difficult could it be? Well, it turns out you actually have a lot of options in terms of how you want to set things up these days in Next.js. So we have server actions. You probably have already seen those, but we also have the use action state hook, which is actually really beneficial and really simplifies a lot of things. But now we also have a new form component in Next.js. So when should you use this one? And so how does everything fit together here? So that's exactly what I will show you in this video. Now what's also getting more popular is to use a form backend. So today's sponsor is Basin. With a form backend, and like Basin, the data goes directly to Basin and then they will notify you over email, for example, they'll help you stop spam. And there's many benefits of using a form backend. It's just much easier, essentially. I'll show you that in the video as well. There are basically two reasons to have a form. Most commonly, it's like this. We're collecting data from a user and we want to store it in our own database, perhaps, or we want to submit it to our separate form backend like Basin. The other use case for forms on your page is for some kind of search functionality. That's actually where this Next.js form component really shines. So I'll show you all of that in a video. All right, so let's start from absolute scratch here. So I just have a plain HTML form here in my Next.js website. So it's all very familiar, right? So we have an input and then I have another input here and a submit button, right? Very basic. This is as basic as it gets. Now what happens if we submit a plain HTML form like this? I'm gonna click submit and you can see the browser by default sort of puts this in a bunch of query parameters and actually it makes a get request to that uh, URL. So actually the page refreshes. This is quite old school. This is not what we want these days. So in Next.js, when you're dealing with submitting data or creating data or updating data, deleting data, you're typically going to use a so-called server action, right? You, you've probably seen this before if you've been working with Next.js. We basically just have use server at the top of the file in this case, and then every function in here is a so-called server action. This runs only on the server, but we can still invoke it from the browser. So in Next.js here, I can add action here, and here I can specify that function. So what React and Next.js will do for me is when I submit the form, they collect the data and won't and we'll send it to my own backend here. Let's try it out. I will submit this form. Hi, how are you? Send message. And you can see there is actually still a network request and specifically it's a post request to the URL on which you're using the server action. So just the home route in this case. If I open up my terminal, you can see we are logging end message here on the server side. Really slick these server actions. I don't have to spin up a whole API endpoint and sort of awkwardly match that up here with some fetch call. That's all handled for me by React and Next.js. And honestly, in my view, this is one of the biggest innovations with React and Next.js in the past few years. Now, typically we also want to deal with a loading state and error state, and that's quite tricky to do. And so we also have the use action state hook. This is also a bit of a recent addition. So with this, instead of passing the server action directly to the form, we would pass it to this hook. And this hook will give us a couple of things. If we return something from our server action, for example, an error, we will get that right here. We will also get an actual action, an actual function that we have to pass here. So this is then the one that you pass to the form. And we also get an is loading state. So now I can use that, let's say here in the button, I can say is loading, we will say sending dot 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 and actually to see that let me quickly add an artificial delay here as well i will just say two seconds of time out here there may be an error right so some validation went wrong or some other issue let's say that we return something here don't include phone numbers in your message you'd be surprised what users actually include in their messages sometimes so we typically don't want to have sensitive data like that so in that case let's just return an error here and that is then what we would get here right so whatever is returned not just an error anything actually but for me at least i typically use this as an error but but formally speaking it's actually just what they call state so it could be anything but for me mostly it's an error so let's say at the bottom here if there is an error we will just uh, create a paragraph element for that now the one tricky thing with this hook is that if you use a server action your signature of your function actually changes. So this is gonna be the previous state. So basically what you returned from the function previously, it's a little bit confusing actually. So in this case, it would be a string. And then you also have to specify what this error should be initially or the state should be initially. So initially we don't have an error. So now if I submit this, let's see what we get. You can see we have a nice loading state here. And after a couple seconds, we see an error message here as well. The form automatically resets as well. And let's say in case of an error, you actually want to keep the values. We can not return a string here, but actually the values themselves again, right? Email and message. And so what you get here, error, we can, we can actually just call it state. And then you can use that 
as the uh, default value. Uh, we can say default value would be state.email, default value state.message. And here we do need to specify some initial data. All right, so now if I submit this, so if I submit this sending after a couple seconds, you can see it's now finished, but we keep the actual values here. Very beneficial if there is only one thing wrong with one of the fields and we don't want to completely wipe out their data. So we can do it like this is a bit of a trick. So with server actions and the use action state, there are many benefits. We can very easily deal with the states of the form. There's also a progressive enhancement benefit. So the form may still work even if the user doesn't have JavaScript. So lots of benefits this way. But we are still receiving the data on our own server. So then it's up to us to actually insert it into a database or send us an email to notify us, etc. Right. So there's lots of other things that you would have to take care of. So using a form backend like Basin actually as you'll see, it's actually super beneficial as well. But let me actually just continue here with the Next.js form component. So actually a bit of an underrated component. I think I haven't seen much about it, but it's actually super beneficial. And I would say it's a must have in many applications actually. So let me actually show you how that would work. Let me actually just make it a little bit simpler here. So we still have a server action and now I'm going to use the form component. It's so new that my autocomplete actually doesn't even know what I should import. So. I'm going to import it manually, which is not something I'm used to anymore, but that's okay. And here I will also make it uppercase F. All right, let me actually clean this up as well. All right, so now we have the Next.js form component looks the exact same. And actually it also behaves the same. So if I would do uh, Bob at Gmail, hello, if I submit here, actually, yes, this is the same as what we had before with uh, the server action. And I'm still logging it here in my terminal. So if you pass a server action to the Next.js form component, it will actually behave as you would expect. So then what is the benefit there? Well, let's say we have a post page. And actually, if you just go there, it will list all the posts that we have. So you can see here, I'm making a fetch call to some dummy API. It's just getting all the posts and we're mapping over all of them and displaying their title here, right? So, okay. Now let's say we want to add a search functionality here. So on the home page, I would like to give the user the option to search by title, right? So I actually added a search form component to the page now. And here is where the Next.js form component really shines. So you can specify a server action like what we did before, basically when you submit data, but it's mostly meant to be used for searching. For this case, we're not gonna pass a server action, we're actually passing a string. So the Next.js form component looks at the type that you pass here for action. And now if I search here, so let's say, I'm just saying test here, if I search post, you can see it actually adds something to the URL. So it will go to slash posts, that what, that's what I specified here, but then it adds these search params, or actually just one here. It will use the name of the input here. So here the name of this input is title, and it will set it equal to the value that the user wrote. Why do we want this? Well, now on that page, I can use that search param to filter the posts I'm actually fetching and then displaying. So on that posts page, I can grab the search params from the URL like this. And actually, since the latest next is actually a promise. So then if I want to grab the title from there, I have to do a bit of an awkward await here and then dot title. And so then we know the type of title the user is looking for. And so then when I fetch the posts, I can filter. I don't want to get all the posts. I want to get the posts with a title underscore like the one they actually are searching for. So now if I go back here, it's actually empty because there are no posts that have test in the title. So let's actually go back. It's actually Latin. So if I do something like key, Let's see what we get. And actually now I get a bunch, but you can see they all have something with a Q U I in the title. All right, let's actually pick Dolorum. So if I go here and I say Dolorum, now if I search, you can see I get only the posts that have something with Dolorum. And you could see that the page was not refreshing when I submitted the form. So it's actually doing a cl client side navigation here. It does some other benefits as well, like prefetching progressive enhancement. And so it may look a bit silly, like it's so simple, but actually if you were not using this component, you actually had to write a bunch of boilerplate. So it simplifies a lot of things when you have a search functionality on your website. All right, now let's say we do have some kind of contact form and the user needs to submit some data to us. So what we've been doing so far is with a server action, that's basically to our own backend. So we have to do a lot of data validation, maybe send an email to notify us that there's been a submission. We have to check for spam ourselves. And so there's many headaches that we're going to get that way. So instead, you may want to consider using a form backend provided to you by Basin. They are today's sponsor. Actually, I had a great time using Basin so far. So let me show you how it works. So here in the dashboard, 
I can set up a new form. I can say that this is my contact us form. I will create the form right here. All right, that's actually already enough. They will give you an endpoint. So basically a URL, and that's what we can specify here for action. All right, so here for the form, I'm just using a plain HTML form. Works perfectly fine. Now I will make the method a post. Right, so by default, it's a get actually. So now the form gets submitted to Basin. Let's actually check and see. So now I still have my same form, still looks the same. Can customize the styling however I want. I will say John at Gmail. And actually, this looks like a spammy message. This is what I'm going to submit actually. Let's actually take a look. All right, so then actually we are redirected to, to the Basin website actually. I can go back to my app here. We can customize this by the way so that we're not redirected, but let's actually see what we get now. So now here, if I go to submissions here, we actually have one submission this is just from the this is just like a hello message from the basin team if i go to the spam tab here you can see i actually can see the submission right here it was flagged as a spam message all right so then here we can see that this message was marked as spam because there was an email used here that is probably used very often for spammy messages but we can still see the content of the message here this is what we want actually because once you start putting a form on your website and, and i notice this all the time because i also have a chat widget on my own website you're going to see a lot of spammy messages so it's nice that they will filter that for you now of course I can also send a normal message. Hi, I'm wondering if you're available for freelancing projects. I'm gonna send this message here. Okay, now if I refresh here, I now actually have a normal message here. I can view it. I can see who it was sent from. I, I can see all sorts of things. And what I also like is they will notify you over email to tell you, hey, there has been a submission of the form on your website and you can view the data right here, right? So Basin is actually using the name of the input that you give it, right? So that's the same with the server action, by the way. So if you extract the data from the form, it's always this, it's this name attribute that is being used. Maybe you want to be notified of the submissions in some other way. So they have some wonderful integrations here as well. And if you don't want to redirect the user to Basin, I can actually also just use the on submit handler. So I can just comment this out and we will just manually post the data very easy. We just create a new form data from the target, the form, and we use the same URL. That's the endpoint that we get for that form and we send it along. So now if I submit a form, I click on send message. You can see message sent successfully. And now if I go to my inbox here, you can see I have a new message here with all the data. Basin has some really nice AI features as well. So when you get these submissions, um, you, you may get a lot of them and you want to efficiently sort them. So I can set things up so that for example, if there is the word job in the message that it should rank it a little bit higher. So we just have to specify what kind of form, this will be a contact form, right? So we can just pick some categories. So what data should a high quality submission have? Well, at least one email address. This is for web development. So here we can specify, for example, when the words job or freelancing or project are in the message. Okay, I'm going to set up the lead agent here. So now I will quickly submit another message here without any of those keywords. So it has a, this one has a score of 40. Now I will send, hey, I have a project. Are you available for freelancing jobs? I'm going to submit this one. And this one has a super high score. So very slick way of quickly sorting the submissions that you get. Now, by the way, for building the form in the first place, I already had my markup available here, but you can also build the form here in Basin. In fact, they actually allow you to do it with AI as well. Contact form for, let's say I'm building a contact form for freelancing for allowing people to inquire about freelancing projects or something like that. Basin actually also allows us to add a CAPTCHA. So if you do want to have something additional to prevent bots from uh, submitting a bunch of data, we can actually add reCAPTCHA, hCAPTCHA, let's say bytegrant.com. I will generate the form. All right, so then here I get a nice form here. So let's say Bob is asking about my availability for freelancing projects. And now I can submit this. That's right, so a really nice. I can get the code right here. I can copy paste that. Or if I want, I can continue iterating over the form to get exactly what I want. So I would say check out Basin. You can find a link in the description. I want to thank Basin for sponsoring this video. I think it fits very well in, in a modern tech stack. So I want to thank Basin for sponsoring this video. I want to thank you for watching. Have a nice day. Bye.